Hi ladies, um, please help me welcome my friend and my sister, Esther. Hi! <laughs> Esther, it's good to have you here with us. Thank, Thank you. you so much for um, just making yourself available and for coming down. Um, myself and Esther, we met through our husbands, who yeah. are really quite close friends. Yeah. Um, and in the time that I've known Esther, she's she's shown herself to be a very sweet. Oh, <laughs> that's so lovely. I can say the same. I can say the same. So, um, so we're yeah. so honoured to have you here. So girls, make sure that you have your pens and your papers and you're jotting down um, these pearls of wisdom because you're not going to want to miss um, what's being said today. So Esther, do you want to just tell us a little bit about yourself and, you know, just what you do? Let's get a feel for who you are. Yeah, so first of all, thank you for having me. Um, I feel so privileged to be able to talk with you on this platform. <laughs> and hi, everyone. Um, so a bit about me. I'm Esther. Um, I've been married for almost two years, so not long, but long in my world. Um, I work in marketing and social media, um, and that's kind of spilled into the ministry. It's kind of what I do at church as well. Um, uh, what else can I say about myself? I love to eat. I love it. <laughs> eat it's actually a problem right now but you know we're taking it to god in prayer um but yeah that's a bit about me i love to have fun love pleasure good. all that good stuff good. my kind of girl yeah cool <laughs> um a couple of years ago you started a page called transit to 30. yeah um do you want to just tell us a bit about what the inspiration was behind that page mm. um yeah and yeah just kind of how you decided to to start it yeah um transit to 30 kind of came into being after just being, I guess, tired of feeling those pressures. So the way I'm built, I'm built slightly differently where I don't follow the crowd. I just don't, I, mm. I don't know how to. Um, but I kept on feeling those same pressures um, for like it's to get married or you need to have this, you need to have this job, you need to work in this industry, you need to be married to a certain kind of man. Um, at a certain age before yeah. 30 and I was 28, 29 um, so I was going to be turning 30 in a few months yeah. um, and I knew I definitely wasn't getting married in a few months so I decided to start this platform mm. um, because I knew in the conversations that I had my friends could relate to those um, issues feeling that pressure feeling like expired goods and my purpose that in terms of starting that platform was to reassure women especially women that they're not they're not expired goods they're not um running out of time god has his time for certain things um but then also there's the reality yeah. as well in terms of how we um, navigate through life and how we apply ourselves yeah. so that was the purpose um yeah of that platform. It's, it's 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 so needed isn't it where yeah. like a, having a safe space where people can actually come and see well actually no it's 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 normal and it's okay yeah for me to enjoy my single moments i remember mm -hmm. there was a time um i was about 26 27 and I had someone say to me, you know, when I was your age, I already had my daughter and I was married. And it's yeah. just like, oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> I can't put a ring on it by myself. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's needed. So it's definitely necessary. And, and I know there's a serious side of that as well in terms of mental health. I've spoken to people where it's really affected their confidence yeah. in all areas just because they weren't married, mm. which sounds insane. But um, yeah, that's why I started. The awesome. Yeah, kind of leads into the next question. So, how did you deal with those societal pressures of singlehood, mm. and what advice would you give to somebody that maybe hasn't found their Mister Right yet? Yeah, um, I'm grateful to have had the parents that I've had. Um, they didn't put a crazy amount of pressure. They still did put pressure. <laughs> They'll be like, "When is he coming?" <laughs> you know, they would always ask when you know that time is coming but um i also knew that i wanted a marriage that was healthy i wanted mm. a marriage that wasn't rushed i wanted a marriage that was full of purpose and i wasn't going to settle for anything less than that yeah um so for me that's kind of what kept me grounded i knew what was godly and what wasn't mm. um and unfortunately had had experiences where something appeared godly and wasn't so i knew that i had to 
walk that journey very carefully. Yeah. Um, but then not say no to every single person that came <laughs> my way. Um, so I knew that in order to fulfill purpose, I needed to be with someone that was going to be right for me. Mm. And, I, and I think that's kind of what helped me not be swayed by what society expected of me. Um, this is a controversial one, but another thing that kind of helped me in terms of pressure was watching those who weren't making the right choices mm. and watching them carefully. Yeah. And so they were teaching me what not to do. And I think we should not look at people who are making wrong choices and feel very proud and feel uppity about it. But learn from but them. Learn. So I was doing a lot of learning, yeah. um, which helped me. And so I felt less pressure as well. And I also um, was on that platform, I was big on you know, enjoying single life, going on dates by yourself, mm -hmm. enjoying the freedom. Yeah. <laughs> enjoying that freedom, hello. <laughs> hello. Um, <laughs> Uh, God, in a godly way, yeah. um, enjoying that freedom as well and looking for your purpose in, in terms of what God has for you. Exactly. Like it's an ongoing journey. Yeah. So. Like you have to be, you have to be whole by yourself before being with someone else, isn't exactly. it? It's not like two halves are coming together, two whole people yeah. are coming together to make that, you know, that one. So yeah. that's really important. Yeah. Thank you. No um, another common question that normally pops up in you know, in the crowd of single women, is is it ever okay, or do you think it's okay for Christians to do online dating? Um, I think it's okay. I think some someone asked me, should I, should I go online to to find a, a, a mate or a man? And I'm I'm like, it's not the question. Is it should? It's can you? I think the option is there, mm. um, but it's not the end or be all. Um, I think in terms of meeting your spouse or your other half, it's not that black and white. I think it's something you can definitely explore, but I think you need to be extra careful. Also use wisdom 100%. with that mm. as well, because we know that sometimes online can present itself one way and then the reality is something else. Um, so I think you need to use wisdom about that. If you know that you have no self-control, if you know that you're easily influenced, then I would say don't go on there. But if it's an option that you would like to explore, yeah, carefully, yeah, then <laughs> it's about the individual, isn't individual, it? Individual, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think sometimes we kind of have this fairy tale in our head about how it's how it's going to happen. I'm yeah, gonna, I'm going to go to church, or I'm going to, you know see someone that from afar across the room and we make this big fairy tale out of it but it's, it's as you said it's not always black and white it's not always black and white yeah so many different colors so yeah wisdom wisdom yes. and that's why you need the holy spirit as well to guide you as well yeah 100 yeah, thank you all right so um going back to your dating side of things mm. um during that season did you ever face feelings of rejection mm. and abandonment yeah um if you did how did you deal with those and what advice would you give to someone who's trying to overcome that, that feeling of rejection oh my gosh yes 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 emphatically yes <laughs> um definitely felt um a lot of rejection i would say a lot but it's like a couple of people um uh, people that i would speak to and people that i had in mind and they were like yeah we're off with someone else yeah <laughs> that kind of thing um and it would hurt i'll be honest it would really really hurt but then i think as i grew um i was i just had this mentality like okay that's not for me then that's not what god that's mm -hmm. not what god has for me and there's a reason and with all due respect <laughs> And this is not to put down anyone, but sometimes I would see the reason, um, not because they're terrible, sometimes because there were some flaws there, but yeah. like, it would be like, God will show me how it would not work. Um, and we need to be sensitive to that as well. Um, not, it's not just about our desires, but what does God want for your life yeah. as well? Um, so how I face that, um, I would talk to a lot of friends, I'll talk to my sisters, I'll cry to my sisters. And I think it's important to have a community, a network, a network of people mm. that you could talk to because you have to be, you can't be over spiritual about it. You need to cry when you need to cry. You need to cry <laughs> and get it all out. Yeah. Um, and I think it's so important to have that 
just have somewhere therapy somewhere where you could be really honest um, and kind of take that burden and put it in a box that is which is what I did put yeah. it in a box and put it away move on <laughs> yeah I mean it's not that easy but like yeah that's how I would deal with it yeah yeah I think um, you know it's it's so needed for us to understand that um, rejection is a part and parcel Mm -hmm. Love you. Get, there are moments where you will be rejected, but finding yourself and knowing who you are and rooting yourself in Christ yeah. is so important. Otherwise, you will end up losing your identity, and yeah. you, you base, you know, you base that moment on yourself. Like, oh, I'm not good enough, or mm. you know, I'm not worthy enough of being loved. But it's not always the case. Maybe it's just God saying that person just isn't for, for you, you, and there's so yeah. much more that I have for you. And you know, they always say that um, looking at things retrospectively, it's, you know, yeah. it's, it's blessing, but you can only really see what's what's gone on after, after you've, you've seen it happen. After, yeah. Okay, um, another question that normally comes up that we would like your opinion on. Mm. Do you ever think that there is such a thing as the one? No. <laughs> it's, Let's it's, hear you. it's so funny it's so funny because now i look at my husband and i'm like that's the one <laughs> like there's no one that no um but yeah it's it's a really tricky question i think i think i think there are people that are suitable for us um and then you have to pick one that's when there is the one yeah we can't have all of them um and some people do believe that there is just this one person, one person. Um, but I do believe there are people who are suitable, but you have to choose which yeah. one. How do I do? How do I even word it? Everyone comes with work. You have to choose your work. There's no perfect person. There's no perfect person. Um, you have to choose your work. Obviously, with the defaults that they love the Lord mm -hmm. and God is, and they've got certain criteria. But yeah, that's what I would say. I would say. Um, don't fixate or obsess over a person. Yeah. Um, but also don't go and, <laughs> I don't know, don't be too lax with it. Yeah, yeah, that's the best way I would say yeah. it. Yeah, 100% I agree because I think sometimes we um, kind of create this list of who we want. Mm -hmm. um, and if the person isn't tall enough, we're just, uh -uh. Um, or if they're, they're not the right shade <laughs> of color that you wanted, <laughs> you, you cross it off. But it's, it's, as you said, I think there's, there are different types of people yeah. um, that could be suitable mm. and it's just kind of knowing where God is calling and drawing you to and sometimes we have to rip up that list. Some, yeah, we have to rip up the list. Yeah, and sometimes you find out that, that what you get in the end is better, than, better. than that list. Um, and someone was asking me and, and asking if I had a type and just this is just me personally I didn't have a type mm -hmm. um, and when you look at anyone that I had any interest or considered none of them the opposite <laughs> none, of them <laughs> like, none of them looked alike but they all had one thing in common which is God but yeah, um, yeah so I would say don't fixate on one person like that yeah unless there's unless you've started that journey together yeah 100 yeah. thank you um what were some of the factors i know you touched on it a little bit in the last question but mm. what are some of the factors that you considered when you were dating mm. that made you say yes to your man <laughs> <laughs> um i know we've said it so many times but loving the lord is so paramount if he can't love god he can't love you mm. Um, because God's love is the ultimate definition of how to love someone selflessly. Um, and I saw that in him. Um, him being a pastor, I was quite reluctant. Yeah, yeah I was quite reluctant. This is confession time. Um, I, I think being a pastor's kid, I, I admired what my dad did. Um, I really did, but I knew it came with a lot. With a lot. And so I was like, maybe not. Um, but his realness, he was very real. Mm. He was very um, relatable, but then God was always first. 
and having that balance there was just amazing to me. Obviously, I did really fancy him as well. <laughs> so that really helped. And I was like, I wasn't even really fussy about the height thing, but here we got the height, we got the dark, we got everything. We've got it. We've got, got it all. But, <laughs> but um, I think I watched how he also related with his mum as so well. Yeah. Um, he was just so caring. I was just like, wow. <laughs> It was like, yeah, that really touched me. I'm sure that it seems like default for a man to love his mum, but not it's everyone not, yeah. is like that. How he deals with his friends, how selfless he is. You know, he would pay for people's dinner, like strangers' mm. dinners, like when we would go out and it would just, and I knew he wasn't for, doing that because I was there. Yeah. Um, his spirit was just genuine. Um, yeah, and I think I'm missing things out, but yeah, he, he was a leader, not just, a leader, leader in the church, but he just carried himself like a leader, not in a proud and pompous way. But yes. he, he was very clear about what he wanted, what he wanted to do, and yeah, those are the factors that yeah. kind of drew me in. That's so beautiful. Um, yeah, it's so it's so nice to just to, just to hear, you know, what what drew you to to your spouse. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so just on the back of that, let's flip it a bit. So there are some people that may be watching this and thinking, well, how do I know um, mm. if God really wants me to get married or if marriage is for me? What would you say to that person? Oh, that is, just, that is a, a tough question. Um, I would say if God, if God wanted you, I think for me, I would speak from my perspective. I just knew that I couldn't, um, Let's be real. I wanted to have sex one day. <laughs> um, and I couldn't do that with myself, but that wasn't why I married my husband. But I knew that in order for that to be fulfilled, he would have to bring me a partner. Um, so that was one aspect of it, but that was kind of, but then there was also that desire for companionship. Um, as comfortable as I was, like I started this journey yeah. for Transit to 30 as I was speaking that platform. Very comfortable in my singlehood. Um, just like maybe one day it will happen, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but there was that just that longing inside of me to have a companion. Um, and I felt like, I felt, I felt very strongly that God was gonna give me that mm. one day. So for me, it's walking with God every day. Yeah. And I think if you're not walking with God every day, you won't really know what he wants for your life. Yeah. So you will know if he wants you to be married. The question is when, and then that's when you continue to, to seek to seek him. Um, I feel like situations like this cause us to seek him more, not just for that, but for relationship with him. Mm -hmm. um, and when you have a relationship with someone, you know what they like, what they would approve of, what they won't approve of. Yeah. Um, and... I think people are not going deep enough, deep, deep, yeah. deep enough um, to, to know that. So I think that would be a, a great place to start. Um, and you won't always get the answer straight away um, because I think some people are like, see God, and then you're just going to hear a big voice. No. Um, and he, he, you might not be hearing straight away because he wants you to continue to seek him. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. We were always told, taught um, when you hide yourself in Christ, mm. then, you know, that person has to also know Christ in order to find, find. Yes. To find you. And it's, it's, yeah. it's so true what you're saying about that longing and that desire. And obviously, there's loads of people in the Bible that, that didn't get married. Yeah. Paul, for example, he wasn't, he wasn't married. married and, yeah. But that was his calling. That's, that's what he... Um, he knew that he could do and what he wanted. So mm. it is so important to align yourself with God and yeah. who he has created you to be um, and make sure it's not coming out of a place of feeling as if mm. you're not worthy of being loved. Right. You know, I feel like sometimes a lot of people have come out of relationships and have faced a lot of rejection. So they're just like, well, this isn't for me then. Mm. And they decide to stay alone, but they do have that longing. Yeah. But it's that pain of, um, of being rejected again mm. so it's so important to align yourself with um yeah with god and who yeah. he's created you to be also to add to that i think as well i think if if god wanted you to not be married there'll be a peace there about it yeah 
there'll be a peace, especially if you're connected to him, and there'll be a peace when you do find, if you are supposed to be married, yes. and you do find that person, 100%. there'll be peace there. So, 100%. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Last question, okay. uh, Vion. We know that you've been married for a while. What would you say are the keys to a successful relationship and marriage? Um, um, we were in. We, we just finished our relationship series, uh, relationship matters series, and one thing I would say is um, have amnesia. <laughs> <laughs> Do that um, because I think. More than ever, I've always looked at myself as a very forgiving person, very nice person, loving person, <laughs> until, <laughs> um, not to scare you uh, uh, out of marriage, but marriage will test you. It will hold, a, you know, a mirror, you know, you've heard it over and over again. Yeah. And there's things that you would see and you'd be like, wait, hold up. How are we going to get past this? And so... Um, one thing I will say is have amnesia, forget the wrongdoings of your partner, not forget it and pretend it didn't happen, yes. but pick your battles is what I'm trying to say. Um, also be prayerful. Um, the world we're living in, you can see that the enemy doesn't want marriages to succeed. Is, yeah. um, divorce is on the rise, even within the church. So you have to be really, really prayerful. If you're getting into marriage, um, and you don't have your spiritual eyes on, then I don't know how you're gonna do it. <laughs> you will do it, but it might be a bit more. It might be it's a, bit a lot more. of work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a little bit. Um, another thing, you said three, right? Yeah, go, go ahead. <laughs> I'm trying to think of another thing. Um, have fun, enjoy, enjoy your spouse. Um, that's who God has given you, and you're gonna be stuck with them for the rest of your life. So you have to figure out how to have fun. <laughs> And enjoy, um, yeah, enjoy your spouse. Yeah, never yeah. let it get old. Yeah, you know, keep trying pursuing, yeah. keep on dating. So we try and have date nights. Yeah. We well, we try. We have to have date nights on Fridays, every Friday, like we did when we started dating. Yeah. Um, I know that will probably change with kids, but <laughs> <laughs> but as long as we can, um, we try and do date nights um, every Friday. And if it's not a Friday, we should reschedule it till a Monday or whatever. Yeah. Um, just keep dating each other. Yeah, and have fun. 100%. Yeah. Thank you. That concludes our <laughs> our discussion and our question and answers. Um, girls, I hope you have found it useful. I hope you've taken mm -hmm. notes down. Um, there's so much more that we can explore, and I'm sure we'll we'll have the opportunity to explore that um, a little later down the line. But <laughs> so thank you so much once thank again. Thank you. For thank coming. you for having me. We have thank enjoyed you. speaking to you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for hearing me waffle and, and talk your heads off. I've really had a good time and thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you.